Thanks again for joining us, everybody, tonight. Uh, my name is Laura Birch. I'm the owner of Birch Travel, and I am really excited to see all of this tonight. It's all about going to Wyoming to some of the most spectacular destinations in our country. Uh, John Gossin, who is the leader of our uh, groups department, is here. He's going to be the one on this trip. Uh, so we'll kind of go back and forth with him. If you have any questions at the end, uh, feel free to throw those questions in. But I'm going to pass it off to Jason. Jason's going to lead us through the day by day of this trip. Um, I'm going to mute myself. You don't need to see me. You want to see Yellowstone and Grand Teton. So Jason, thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, Laura. And I am super excited to talk about uh, this area. I've been guiding personally into Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Park for the last 11 years, 12 years, actually, and uh, went over a birthday so um, of guiding. So 12 years of this. Um, and this is somewhere that I actually personally grew up. And I'm super excited. One of my favorite things as a guide is to be able to showcase and share the places I love and watch um, you get changed by your experience traveling to this area. And that's truly what travel does is it impacts us and it stays with us for the rest of our life. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and talk about it. Um, to start out, we're just gonna talk about the daily itinerary and what happens. Um, so day one, we fly into Bozeman, Montana. You're going to arrive middle of the day, early afternoon. We're going to stop in historic downtown Bozeman, Montana, have lunch, and then we're going to drive through Big Sky Country, which is what Montana is called, to West Yellowstone, Montana, which is right outside the west entrance of Yellowstone National Park. It's a beautiful scenic drive, wonderful, lovely country. Um, we go by uh, the Gatlin River as we cruise through that area. Just very, very stunning and picturesque. The first thing we're going to do right when we get into West Yellowstone after checking into our hotel is we're going to go check out the Grizzly Wolf Discovery Center. So this place is actually a really, really neat thing. It's got an interesting history too. Um, back in 1993, it was founded by an individual who wanted to create more awareness of um, grizzly and wolves because they were so important and impactful to the Yellowstone ecosystem and the greater Yellowstone ecosystem as we call it. The um, It was bought by an entertainment company out of New York because they thought they could monetize it and then they realized this wasn't what they wanted to do. They wanted to close it down um, back in 1999 and then these uh, they created a 501c3 that opened it up or that kept it open as a um, nonprofit education center, and they do an amazing job. Um, this is a really great opportunity for you guys to get firsthand in-depth experience um, with your traveling companions and learn about how important the bears and wolves and other animals are to the Yellowstone ecosystem, the greater Yellowstone area, also Grand Teton National Park, and a lot of the Mountain West. Um, Grizzlies exist all up and down the Rocky Mountains and into Canada and um, Alaska. Wolves have been reintroduced into the lower 48 states. And now they're actually, they just did a big reintroduction of them into Colorado. So you get to really get an in-depth educational experience. We'll help you understand more about the ecosystem we're going to explore for the next week. Um, when you're there, you really get to get up close and personal with these animals. Um, the really cool thing is the bears here and the wolves were actually all recovered from peop, uh, animals that would have been put down if they st stayed out in the wild, whether they were cubs that lost a mother um, and would have died if they would have uh, stayed out in the wild or they were um, getting into populated areas and they were going to be euthanized. There's a lot of different histories with each of the bears and uh, um, the wolves that are here at the Discovery Center, and you get to get to know them better. The other unique thing is the bears actually are a testing thing. Um, they do tests for products. So a lot of people don't know this, but they actually get to test out uh, coolers and garbage cans and other things like that 
And if you want to know where a bear box or a cooler or anything is determined to be bear safe, this is actually one of the primary places they do that. And you actually get to see the coolers and other boxes and, and containers that they get to rip apart and play with inside their thing. Um, there's other animals that they do um, things with, including otters, uh, fish, um, uh, multiple fowls, uh, such as golden bald eagles, um, owls, and different things like that. There's more than just grizzlies and wolves, but they are the primary thing there. Um, it's a great, fascinating place to explore. It's within walking distance of the hotel. So when we go there, if you want to spend some extra time and explore the area or like learn more about them and, and get more in depth and just watch the different bears come in and out, um, you can do that. It's, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, the next day, we really get to go into Yellowstone and really get to just in depth. Uh, we do the upper loop of Yellowstone, and if you're wondering what that means, Yellowstone is a figure eight. So you have the upper loop and you have the lower loop. Um, with the upper loop, we start out by going directly to the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. That's the what's in the background there. Um, Yellowstone Falls, upper and lower Yellowstone Falls. This is a really unique area and critical to the uh, geological and geographical um, region. It kind of separates... Um, Yellowstone in a lot of ways, as you can understand, this um, kind of parts the water, so to speak, in terms of what's on one side of it, what's on the other. Um, and then as we go through the upper loop, we're going to go up and over Dunraven Pass. We're going to go into Lamar Valley, um, which is basically considered to be the Serengeti of um, North America. More bears, wolves, bison, elk, deer, moose in that area than anywhere else we're going to visit. It is an amazing place. Um, and after Lamar Valley, we go to Mammoth Hot Springs, and then we go into Norris Geyser Basin. That's one of the things that's pictured on the top of the screen there. Um, that is a very full day. We're going to see a lot. We're going to do a lot. There's going to be opportunities to get out and walk and hike and explore things. More and the bigger thing is, though, the wildlife watching. Um, you're also going to get a really good in-depth history of Yellowstone National Park and the unique um, ancestral Native American history and also the um, current history of the Anglo-Saxons and the introduction to it and um, more about how it became our first America's first national park back in the 1800s. And then the next day, we do the lower section of Yellowstone National Park. We focus mainly on what we call the, the geyser basin or the thermal section of Yellowstone. We did hit some in the upper section, but the lower section from the uh, Grand, Prismatic um, Grand Prismatic Spring, which is pictured there on the top, to the actual you know main thing of Old Faithful, uh, that is, we're going to hit a lot of different geysers and thermal features, and um, we're going to learn about their impact in this area, what's created them, what creates those really unique um, color bands, uh, depending on the water temperatures and all those things like that. Um, when we're at Old Faithful, we get to go to the old historic lodge there and explore that area also. Um, and then as we move our way around in the afternoon, we're going to end up over in Cody, Wyoming. Now, Cody, Wyoming is on the east side of Yellowstone National Park. It's a really unique old western town. Um, Cody's been in existence almost as long as uh, settlers have been coming to this area. Um, it is <clears throat> definitely a place where the west still lives very proud and strong. So that evening, we're going to go to the Cody Cattle Company dinner show. Um, that dinner is an all-you-can-eat buffet chuck wagon dinner. Uh, lots of different options. Um, we do have the ability to have some, if we have some dietary restrictions, such as gluten-free or vegetarian or things like that, we can accommodate those. And I'm just going to put that out now because that probably will come up later. Um, but we do an all-you-can-eat chuck wagon dinner while the show is going on. We do the, the, and the show is a really great band. These guys are country western stars that have been playing throughout the United States at fairs and rodeos and big concerts and different things like that. 
but they've settled in. Cody Wyoming is their, their permanent thing for now. It's a great dinner show. And then once that's over, we walk next door, literally next door, and we go to the Cody Night Rodeo. And in the Cody Night Rodeo, it is a full rodeo. You get to see um, uh, bull riding and bareback riding and um, broncos and then the roping and all those different types of things. It is a true Western experience. And that's how we end our evening in Cody. The next morning, we go to Grand Teton National Park. And I have a lot of different photos of Grand Teton. And this is just one of many. Um, we start out the day Grand Teton. We actually spend two days in it. Uh, the first day, um, this one, we go from the north side as we come from Yellowstone National Park down into Grand Teton. We focus on Colt Jackson Lake which is the main body of water that is formed at the base of Grand Teton, the mountain range there. Uh, we go to Coulter Bay, we explore that area, we explore Jackson Lake, Jackson Lake Lodge, and we work our way south. There will be multiple opportunities for wildlife watching. Um, photography is a big thing. The most of the photos that we're seeing here are my photos um, that I've taken over the years that I have been a guide. Um, we love photography. We love because Photos and video. Now video is even more important than photos to some people. We love you being able to have memories of the things that you have seen. And those photos and videos are where you get to see that just as much as you get to see them in, the, um, in your mind. So lots and lots of opportunities for that. And then in the afternoon, we get a really unique opportunity to do a snake river float trip. Now there's a lot of different things with um, snake river float trip. Some people say they're a snake river float trip and they take you down past Jackson and you get to go through this gorge. This company that we um, have the float trip tonight actually floats through the national park. There's only two companies that can do it. Um, it is an amazing experience. These are photos that are taken on the river and what you will see. Um, the one in the bottom center, you can't, it's a little bit smaller than I had planned when I created the presentation, but there's a moose standing right in the middle of the river that you get to float by. Um, wildlife is going to be very abundant. Moose, elk, deer, bald eagles, river otters. Um, you're gonna see rainbow trout swimming by you. This is one of the most, um, for fly fishing and other stuff like this, this section of the river is one of the most sought after uh, trout fisheries in and around Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Park. Beautiful, beautiful things. In the afternoon and evening, the views are stunning. The mountains are backlit, um, just like you see in these photos. And your guide's going to tell you stories and history and culture and other information about the park, talk to you about the animals, the importance of the ecosystem that's here. It's just an amazing couple hour experience as you move around. No, you don't have to go swimming unless you purposely fall out of the boat. It's going to be a little chilly, but it is just a phenomenal experience, one that you will not soon forget. Um, that evening, sorry, I should go back. Uh, that evening after the float trip, we go to Dornan's, which is one of the few private land um, pieces that are inside Grand Teton National Park. And you get to learn about that history a little bit more um, on the following day. But Dornan's has a phenomenal chuck wagon dinner that evening. And basically you sit outside and have dinner by the Snake River overlooking your background is um, the Grovant mountain range and the Tetons. One on one side of you, one on the other. The, the layout, the, the area that you're going to be at is amazing. It's I can't say enough. I'm going to say that word again and again. It is it's a unique experience that you just, it's a great way to end, end the day. Um, the next day, we go to Grand Teton National Park again. Um, we spend the night in Jackson Hole. The next day, we are inside the park. We go to Mormon Row. Now, Mormon Row, um, historically, there is a set of homes and uh, homesteads that were actually inhabited by uh, Mormons. Uh, when they first settled into this area. And some of those uh, plots are still owned by um, the people that origin their descendants. It's a really unique history, but you get to see that area. And then we go to Jenny Lake. Jenny Lake is pictured on the left there in the background. 
you get to take a float or sorry a, a boat cruise across the lake and then if you want to, you get the opportunity to hike about half a mile up to Hidden Falls, which is the backdrop for these uh, this wonderful couple um, that you see here. Uh, after going to Hidden Falls, you come back, and then that afternoon, you have the option to go and just explore downtown Jackson Hole, um, or you get to do an optional horseback ride. Now, this horseback ride is done at Spring Creek Ranch, Spring Creek Ranch is one of those other private land holdings that's right on the border of Grand Teton National Park. Um, phenomenal place, amazing, amazing views. That is your backdrop. These are taken from actual horseback ranch rides. While they're out, these are the views that you get to enjoy. Um, just a stunning, stunning, amazing place and the the wranglers that uh take you there do a phenomenal job um that is an optional thing that is not included in the cost of the tour i believe um that is something you can sign up for extra but it's a great way um for you to kind of cap off the experience if you just don't want to explore downtown jackson this is a great way to have a, a final like feather in your cap as you uh finish the trip Okay, on day six, that's when you fly back home. Now, the other unique thing about Jackson, Wyoming, is this is the only um, airport in the United States that's actually inside a national park. This is the view that you get as you're standing in the terminal waiting to fly home, and as your plane is taking off, this is what you get to look at. It's a phenomenal way to end the day um, and a phenomenal way to end your trip as you uh, return back home. Okay, couple other housekeeping things. Lodging, so lodging that we have designed in this trip is three to three and a half stars. So the Kelly Inn at West Yellowstone, really, really centrally located about two blocks off the main drag or the main downtown section of uh, West Yellowstone, right near, um, it's almost across the street from the Grizzly Wolf Discovery Center. Fantastic property. The Comfort Inn at Buffalo's Bills Village, also a really good property, um, centrally located to the downtown area in Cody. Um, lots of things to, if you're not tired after the rodeo and the, the dinner show, if you want to get out and just walk around or in the morning before we take off, you want to get out and just take a walk around town. Both of those property are, are very centrally located, wonderful. Okay, the Lodge at Jackson Hole, three and a half star. Some people rate it actually as a four star hotel. It's a wonderful property located just off um, the main central area of Jackson, Wyoming. Um, it's backed up by a bunch of neighborhoods and then um, also has a walking path that you can access across the um, main highway from it. Uh, so very easeable very easy walkable hotel, um, easy to have access to the downtown area from that hotel. Um, but also if you just want to get on a walking path and you want to go walk around um, outside the downtown area, um, there's a creek that runs um, through downtown Jackson and you can actually go and explore that right from that property. Um, it's also got a lot of good amenities um, in property that you can enjoy um, as you do that. Uh, inclusions. Um, I <clears throat> obviously this is really small. Don't need to read through it all. A uh, couple highlights is we've included all the entrance fees and everything. Um, so there's no cost for any of those. Um, we've included all your gratuities. So the guide gratuities um, for everything that's supposed to happen, those are all included. The motor coach driver, the tour guide, um, all the meals, all the activities, those are included. Five breakfasts are included, four lunches and four dinners. Your park entrance fees are all there. Um, we have portage included there. And then you have the horseback ride, as I mentioned there. Um, okay. I, at this point, am going to, if I can get to our next screen. So, that point, we're going to open it up for questions. 
Perfect. I, you did a wonderful job covering off on so many things. I'll start with a couple of questions that I had along the way. Um, obviously a lot of wonderful opportunities for getting out and exploring and hiking, um, but wondered about accessibility. You know, is this a trip that if you are with a walker or wheelchair, it's just not going to be a fit for you or can we make it work for everyone? Kind of who's the ideal person for this tour? That's a good question. So the really neat thing is this specific trip, the way it's designed, the areas we're going to go to, the stops we're going to make, but more importantly, the national parks we're going to, this is a trip that can cater to the old and the young, um, the active and the um, the less active or the, the ones with physical restrictions. Um, just to uh, the National Park has done a really good job, both in Grand Teton and in Yellowstone National Park. They've done a phenomenal job of making things wheelchair accessible, walker accessible. Um, so, and with the way this trip is designed, if you want to attend it and you have those limitations, we could accommodate you. Um, so, and if you're traveling with a young family, you have a stroller, you have a couple of young kids, this is also a good fit for them. Um, there's lots of opportunities for hands-on interactive experiences in all the areas we're going to. Um, that like the way this trip is designed, it really is a fit for both sides of that. Perfect. So it could be a good multi-generational family trip. Um, if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, it's definitely yes, on my list for my family. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah. Judith had a great question. She said, what are the crowds like that time of year? Will the attractions be really crowded? That's a great question. Um, and was it June? Did I get the name? Judith. Right? Judith. Okay. So Judith, um, don't believe everything that social media posts. Okay. Like that's the first thing I'm going to say. Um, the really... I really don't like the fact that everyone does that. You know, this is what you think it is. This is what your photo shows. And then this is what it really is like. Um, the really nice thing is we're, the crowds are going to be so-so. Is it going to be totally overcrowded and overrun with people? No. Um, we're going to have, you know, moderate crowds in terms of, are you going to be there alone? No. But at the same time, by traveling with us, we're going to go to places the way we have the itinerary built. We're hitting places, we're hitting viewpoints, we're hitting areas to explore um, so that we maximize your experience inside those areas and limit the impact of having other guests there at the same time. That's that's one of the MOs and what we do best as part of our tours is making sure of that. Can we do that in every location? No, there's a couple choke points such as um, Old Faithful or Jenny Lake Boat Ride. There's a few times where there will be more crowds than others, but a lot of places we're going to go, we do the best we can to limit your exposure to other crowds and maximize your ability to really enjoy it. Perfect. I'm going to hit John up with a question as I kind of walk you through where you can find more information about this tour on our website. Um, I'm just at burstravel.com. If you head into our services section, then scroll down to Bursch exclusive groups, you will see all the groups that we have going in 2024 and 25. So here, this leads me into my question to John, who is going to be leading this trip. We're going all over the country. We're going all over the world with these different groups in the next two years. What is it about this specific trip that you said, I want to lead this one? I think that our, our Burst Travel clients would really enjoy it. Sure. Um, well, I took my wife uh, to this location. We just kind of did it on our own. We winged it um, back right during COVID, um, which was an experience. Um, I don't think we got to see what we really wanted to see. Uh, without a guide, which um, I've learned that is a huge, huge benefit to go on a guided tour. Um, so definitely my love for the area. I fell in love with the area. My wife fell in love with the area. We just want to share ex the experience, obviously, with Burst Travel, because we think this is not going to be the only time that we ever do this uh, tour. So we're super, super excited and Hope, uh, and, our, and our big goal is the multi-generational. So we want to bring families and uh, grandma and grandpa and grandkids on this trip and, and ex experience it with them. So 
that is the big reason we put this one together. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? You can, you can put them in the chat. Feel free to unmute yourself. I have one question. Um, right. The horseback riding, the optional, what's the approximate cost for that? Uh, we had it at $100. I, okay. I, I want to say it's 100 to 125 if I remember correctly. Um, I glanced at it on the flyer uh, at one point. And I have that actually great. Right as here. long as we have an idea approximately. Um, yeah. Great. All right. It's, Monica says it's $100 per person. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously, John, you live in Minnesota. I think most of our people joining this group will be from Minnesota. If you have a family member who's in California, can they join this trip too? Or is it you've got to fly out of Minneapolis? Um, yes, 100%. You can come from anywhere. We'll get you there and, and meet up with you. And, um, you know, even if you want to extend a couple of days on the tail end or the beginning, we'll, we'll find a way to we'll let you know where we're going to be and we'll meet up with you. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and put that link to our website and the uh, brochure in the chat here so you have it for later if I can find it on my screen here we go um, and like I said at the beginning this was recorded so I'm going to post this on our social media I'm going to post this on our website if you have friends or family that you think would um, love to join us on this join you with it please 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 share the information um, it's going to be an incredible trip I don't know of many tours that that do this much inside the national parks in this amount of time. It's either a much longer trip or you're kind of on your own, like John was saying. So um, to have that help and and to see such beautiful destinations, um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little jealous. I can't go this year. So I'm hoping it's a huge, huge success so we can do it next year and I can be a part of it. Um, and I'm gonna give one last call. Any final questions? I think we're good. All right, well, thank you again for joining us. Uh, have a great rest of your night and we'll hopefully see you in Wyoming. Thank you guys, appreciate it.